So this is my second attempt at uh, getting this video right about reinstalling the bearings on the drive shaft on the so shop smith. Um, the first video I made, I don't know what I did, but it didn't come out right. So I mean, you, since the thing is already put together, I'm going to use some uh, just some pieces and parts to demonstrate uh, how you, how you want to do this. I'm going to pretend that this is the drive shaft. Now when you've got it all apart, um, driving them, driving the bearings off the shaft, it really doesn't matter what you do to the bearings because uh, they're old, they're used. That's what these are. These are the old used bearings. Uh, but when you put them back on, you want to be a little more careful. Um, so, we're going to pretend that this is the drive shaft. Now to do this, you would set this on a on a surface. These are bits of aluminum that I keep in the vice jaws. Uh, in this case, I'm going to clamp this thing in place. You putting the, the bearings back on the shaft would not. You just set it there. But for this, so it doesn't move around, I'm going to clamp it in the vise. Now you put, put your bearing over the shaft. Now it wouldn't slide down just like that, or it shouldn't anyhow. It's going to come down and it's going to hit the shoulder. And then you would take uh, some kind of a driver that is slightly bigger than the shaft, but not any bigger than the center race on the bearing. That's this part in here. So you slide it down to the shoulder, put your driver over the shaft so that it rests evenly on the center. And that's important because when you're driving a bearing on, or better yet, if you're pressing a bearing on, uh, when you're going to the outside of a shaft, you want to drive it by the inside race. That way, that race takes the shock or the pressure uh, and your outer race and more importantly your ball bearings that are inside here don't take the shock. You don't want to shock those those balls at all if you can, if you can help it. So you, you would, I'll use this one anyway. You would put that over. This should be longer like that. But I want to get it in camera. So you put that over and you take your your hammer and you drive this and I would put something over the over the end of it like that so it's the, the pressure is oh, I'm off camera again hold on sorry about this I like to do a better job but I rarely do well, anyhow you want to put something over the end of your driver so that the force comes down evenly so you press that down until that bearing seats against the flange down below now, in between the two bearings, there is a spacer, and for that, I'm going to use... Okay, so, first bearing is on. We've driven it on by the inside race, because it's going on the outside of a shaft, and we do that so we don't frig up the bearings. And then we put in the spacer. Now, in this case, on the shopsmith, it's a loose-fitting uh, spacer. It just slides down. This roll of tape is our spacer, and it should do exactly that. Then the second bearing goes on, again hits the shoulder, put your driver on, and your top, and then gently, and you don't want to beat this thing like you hate it, you just want to tap it down gently, it should slide right on. I apply a little bit of oil to the, uh, the shank where it's got to sit. I don't know if that's right or not, but that's what I was taught. Uh, so you set that on there, put your thing on, gently tap it down until it seats. Now I don't know what the actual manufacturing manual specifies, but when I was done and had driven both bearings down to the flange and seated them, uh, it was a little tight. So when I reinstalled it into the headstock, it would go in, if this was the headstock, it goes in like that, you drive it in there, should go in with relatively light force. Uh, I drove it, once I got it in there, I drove it back and forth just a, a tap or two so that 
these bearings would turn very smooth before uh, when I had just assembled it it was a little stiff the bearings and the spacer were tight together so after it was installed in the headstock I drove it back and forth just a little tiny bit to create a little bit of motion so that those bearings would, would turn freely uh, inside the headstock there, there may be a right and a wrong way I'm sure there is I don't know it this is just what I did and it's worked fine in the last frame of the slideshow I got a can of silicone spray uh, I was going to cut that out at the end but I decided to just go ahead and leave it you never know when something might be useful anyhow I put all this back together and one of the things I like to do is slick up the weigh tubes and the cutting surfaces and the extensions and conventional wisdom among shopsmith people says to use Johnson's paste wax and I'm not questioning that it's probably a very good thing I don't happen to have any but what I do have is several cans of garden variety silicone spray and that's what I've used and it's worked awesome uh, spray that on give it a wipe and it makes the surface very slick uh, without leaving anything behind that will stain the wood uh, and that's what I have done and it's worked out great so I hope you found this useful and uh, enjoy